Question four, spreadsheet. So all the same rules apply. And this time we're using the four visitors spreadsheet, which contains data about visitors to the permits. Work in the PYR, PIR worksheet. 4.1, format the worksheet as follows. Change the page orientation to landscape. Ensure that row two will be repeated at the top of each page when you print the worksheet. Okay, so change to landscape is on the layout tab, orientation, landscape. Now, before I do the row two thing, let me just show you what it'll print like at the moment. At the moment, nothing repeats at the top. Okay, so we have to print the titles and the row that needs to repeat at the top is row two. You'll see when I, the moment I move my cursor over the sheet, it actually becomes a black arrow and then I can just choose row two. And it's not necessary to tell it where to stop, it will know automatically. And if I look at the print preview now, you'll see that the second row is then repeated automatically up to the end. Okay. 4.2. Use a combination of text functions in cell D3 to extract only the text after the at sign from the email address in column C. Example, if the email address is zulul at in.com, then only in.com must display. Okay, so this is a tricky one, but they've asked this a few times before, so I know the... Um, order in which to do this. So basically what you need to do is the first thing, I'm going to use the building blocks space over here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the position of the at. Okay, so I'm going to choose, I'm going to use the find function. The text I'm finding, so find text is an at, comma, within text is within the email, and I don't need to specify a start number, you'll see that's an optional argument anyway. Right, so the position of the at is at number six. Second thing I need to determine is the length of the entire text string. So len of the entire text string is that much. All right, so if I, I'm just going to show you a few examples. And um, now you'll see, if I say 12 minus six and the rest also, the length minus the position of the at symbol, 6, 10, 13, 8. All right, so you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Do you see? So each time the number of digits that I'm counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, so it works out perfectly. Um, each time the number that I get over here is the number of text that I need to extract from the right side. So the order that I do this in is going to be the same every time. I determine the position of the at or the hashtag or the whatever it is that splits the, the text in two. I take the length of the entire text string and I subtract those two. And that's how much I need to extract from the right side. So then it's just right of this text, comma, and the number of characters is six. Okay, now it's extremely important that you click on the right six and not this one. Um, in this instance, it would have been the same as the position of the at, but it would not have worked in all instances. Okay, so we weren't supposed to copy it down, but just so that you can see it would have worked if we copied it down. Do you see? Okay. So that's how we know it works correctly. 4.3. Use an appropriate lookup function in cell F4 to determine the location of the pyramid in row 4 by using the code in column E and the lookup table in, code, in the code worksheet. Ensure that this function will return the correct results if copied to the other cells in column F. Note, do not copy the function to the other cells. So we just need to check that it would work if we were to copy it, but we shouldn't actually copy it. Okay, so 
in cell F4 using the code in column E and the lookup table in code worksheet. So F4, this is the fourth row. This is where we're standing. We need to use the code in E in the column E. So let's let's just look at this by hand. By hand, that's how, how I always work out what to do. So this code is twenty four, and we need to determine the location. So we go to the code worksheet. We see over here. Okay, it's code twenty four, and the location is that. Okay, so that is how the function needs to look it up as well. It's always good to look it up yourself first, just so that you know where everything is and what the setup of the data looks like. Okay, now we can actually use the function to do it. So the correct function that we're doing in this instance, because I look the code up vertically. Okay, this is a vertical list. It's going to be a VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP. So the lookup value that I'm using, I'll just use my function builder for this one. The lookup value that I'm using is what code did I use to look it up? This is the code that I as person used to look it up, correct? Table array is where did I look this up? On the code worksheet, correct? And then I choose the entire table. Okay, I can't just use a, the sing, a single column or a little piece of it. Um, I suppose most correct would probably be to not use the headers, but or the headings, but that's not um, they don't penalize you for using that, so that's not a, a massive thing. Now, remember they said that this should be able to copy down, even though we aren't going to copy it down. So that's where this comes in, is actually um, making this uh, table absolute. So I'm using absolute cell referencing. So while I'm standing here and it's got the um, dotted line that's moving, I can just press F4 and it's going to make both the start and the end of my table reference absolute cell referencing. It's going to apply absolute cell referencing to both. Right. Now the column index number is how many column, if I can put it that way. Let me just wipe this out and I'll show you now quickly. You'll see if I pull this down, do you see it shows me 42 rows times three columns? Okay, so which column contained the location? The third column, correct? Okay, now the last argument you'll see is not bold because it's not a required argument. In this is instance, you didn't have to pull it in for to get get a mark, but it could have been false. That would have been the correct argument if you were to enter one. Um, I'll show you why. Um, you'll see it's also in square brackets. That's how you know it's not um, required. So true is an approximate match. False is an exact match. And since there is a code for every single pyramid, there isn't one skipped. It's not as if it's like one to five is in a specific place and five to seven is in another place. It's actually got a code for every single one. That's why I'm using false as the last argument. But I don't have to. It's actually going to work without that. And you actually get your marks even though you don't enter that. 4.4. Use a formula in cell H5 to determine the age of Gabrielle Wilmer in completed years by using the date of birth in column G and the current date. Okay, so H5. So we need to determine how old this person is in completed years. So what that means is if I am 35.6, um, it doesn't actually get rounded up, it gets rounded down because my number of completed years is 35. I've only completed 35 years. All right, so what I need to do here is I need to use the birth date in column G and today's date. So if you want to do this in building blocks, you could have first put today's date in another cell over here by using the today function because we have to have a dynamic. That's why they're saying the current date. 
So let's just do it all in one for this instance. So I'm going to use today's date. So today, you'll see it shows me how to complete this function. Hey, let's just close the other um, round bracket minus the date of birth. Okay. That gives me the number of days that this person is old. So now I'm going to divide this answer. So the total answer, that's why I'm putting it in round brackets, by the number of days in a year so that I can convert the number of days to years. And that is 365.25, although they don't require you to add in the 0.25. That's just if you want to be exact because there are um, there's an extra day every fourth year, right? Okay, so that's 50. Now, to have the exact um, correct date and not just have it display correctly because they've clearly set it. Let's just put it on general. Do you see? They've clearly just set it to display without decimals. Um, we want to round it down so that it shows us the completed years. So for that, we need to use round down. Okay. Now, round down needs its own open bracket. So I can't go and steal this open bracket that belongs to this calculation. Okay. So I need to give it its own round bracket. This entire calculation that's in there is part of the number that will be rounded down. Okay, so now we continue in the function and we need a comma and the number of digits that gets rounded down is we want zero digits because we want completed years. And then we close the function and press enter. So this would also count as a formula because we've combined um, regular operators like a minus, we've used two different functions and we've also done a division as well. So this would definitely count as a formula and not as a function. 4.5. Insert a nested if function formula in cell I14 to display a yes if a visitor is under the age of 60 column H, and visited Giza, column F, or else no must display. All right. So the reason they're saying formula is because a nested if is a formula because we're using two ifs in one. Okay. Um, now, we could have done this um, for a yes to display if someone's under the age of 60 and visited Giza, um, just using the AND function. But because they specifically asked for a nested IF function, we have to use a nested IF function. We can't do it any other way. So let's see how to do that. So it's under the age of 60, column H, and visited Giza, column F. Right. In I14, let's get started. So if let's work let's do it at the top over here so my first logical test is is this person's age column h under the age of 60 okay that's my first logical test completed comma if that is true can we say yes then no not yet eh? we have to do a second test first so now we start the second if is the, uh, the location they're visiting Giza? So now we're saying, is the location in column F equal to Giza? Then the value, if true, can be yes. Okay. If this second test is failed, then the answer must be no. All right, close the bracket for the, for the second if. Now the problem is, you'll see this entire part was the value if true for the first if. So the first if still needs the value if false. So we f still need to say, if the person is not less than 60 years old, it already immediately needs to say 
no. It can't say anything else, then it mustn't even proceed to the second test. Okay, just perfectionist in me, I'm just going to fix that. There you go. So that's what our final answer looks like. All right. Now, um, we can't really test this uh, unless we copy things down, which they told us explicitly not to do. So we have to assume that this is correct. Um, I'm going to save my spreadsheet now and then I'm going to copy things down and see um, if I get a, an answer where there is one that says yes. Let's see. Ah, there's one that says yes. Do you see? They are under 60 and they are, they are visiting Giza and it actually works. It gets us a yes. Right, so I'm going to undo, leave it as is, save and close.